If you don't crave this meal, are you even Korean? I was actually envisioning this meal. Mm. Hi guys, it's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another mukbang. You're watching another episode of Munching Mondays, which is my mukbang series. Mukbang is an eating show, so we're gonna eat together and we're gonna chat. So if that is your thing, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel and thumbs up this video. So guys, we are back, and this time we're not just doing a mukbang, but we are doing a cookbang. We're gonna cook together. Well, we're gonna cook together, okay? We're gonna make some food together first before we enjoy the food, okay? So it's gonna be like a semi-recipe. Okay, so today we're gonna be eating some vegan tuna kimbap, which is Korean seaweed rice rolls. Okay, kim in Korean is seaweed, pap is rice, kimbap, seaweed rice. There you go. That's the Korean lesson you didn't ask for. We're gonna make some vegan tuna kimbap. We're gonna make a vegan tuna out of my favorite thing, which is chickpeas. So we're basically making a chickpea salad, which I, well, we're not making it. We've already, we've already made the chickpea salad because let's face it, guys, you've seen me make chickpea salad a million times, but the recipe for the chickpea salad will be linked below. And I'm also gonna be eating the kimbap with some instant noodles, mm -hmm, some cup noodles because my friends, if you are not Korean, you may not know this, but kimbap and instant noodles is like peanut butter and jelly, okay? It is a food combo made in the heavens. <laughs> they just belong together, so let's make this, okay? Hi guys, before we jump into the video, I just wanna let you guys know that I'm hosting yet another trip to Bali, one of my favorite places because it was so fun last year. Oh, you guys, if you missed last year's Bali trip, you missed out, but guess what? We're doing it again this year. So make sure you check out the link below if you are interested in coming along to Bali with me and other amazing like-minded people. We are going to be basically doing a vegan food tour and we made it even better than last year. Last year was amazing, we had so much fun and so that's why I'm doing a repeat, but I wanted to make it even better. So we have lots of delicious vegan restaurants on the itinerary. We're also gonna be doing the Monkey Forest, which is amazing. We're gonna do a Balinese cooking class. We're gonna visit a local farm. It's it's gonna be so fun, you guys. So guys, if you wanna come with me on a trip to Bali, it's gonna be a vegan food tour. The link is below to book your spot. There are limited spots available, so make sure you don't miss out. You don't have to pay the full price right away. You can just pay 25% of the price, and then that holds your spot. So these trips are so fun, you guys. I have so many repeat travelers that have come with me to multiple trips because they are so fun, and we just basically become really good friends. So yeah, come with me to Bali. Link is below. All the details will be in the link below as well and hopefully I'll see you in Bali. So first of all you guys I do have a full-on kimbap recipe video showing multiple different I think I showed like four or five different ways of making vegan kimbap so I'm gonna link that below as well so if you guys want to know different ways of making vegan kimbap you can watch that video. Yeah okay let's get started. Ooh, I got some sushi rice or short grain rice. This is already cooked. I wanna work with this before it gets too um, cooled down, okay? So what we wanna do to the rice is we're gonna add some roasted sesame oil. This in Korean is called tamgirum. This, we, guys, we put this stuff on everything. We don't need a lot because it's quite potent, so you don't need a lot. Woo! It's smelling, um, smelling nice and roast. It smells so good. And along with the sesame oil, we're gonna add some, uh, some salt. Okay, you can be quite generous because with kimbap, there's a difference between kimbap and sushi. Okay, my friends, kimbap is Korean. Sushi's Japanese. <laughs> but the difference is that sushi rice is like sweet and vinegary and kimbap rice is nice and like savory. Because we're using the sesame oil, which is roasted, so it's like really, really nice and uh, just, it just, it's so good, okay? If I can think of a savory flavor, it would be this one. Mm -hmm. So you just wanna mix this well. Just salt and sesame oil is really all you need. And also the difference is that with kimbap, you don't really dip it. I mean, you can if you want to, but traditionally you don't dip it in like soy sauce or anything. So you might want the, the rice to be well seasoned, okay? Okay, so I'm just gonna give this a little taste. I was actually envisioning this meal. I was on a flight recently, recently like yesterday, <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. I wanna make this, so I was like craving it. I was like, just, you know when you're on a flight and you got like no more food left, because you've like gone through your your stash and you're like, oh my God, I need to eat something and you're starving and then you start to like envision meals. I don't know, is that, is that, do you guys do that too? 
I was doing that and this is the meal I was envisioning. So I was like, I need to make this ASAP when I get home. Mm, tastes delicious. The rice is prepared. As you can see, I just eyeballed it, but you know, if you need measurements, again, you can probably check out my kimbap recipes blog post or video, which those will be linked below, but that's the rice. Most Koreans will just eyeball it, okay? Rice is ready. Now we can put it together because basically I've already prepared the ingredients I don't wanna add. So what I've prepared is some julienne carrots, some julienne cucumber, and also some pickled radish, uh, thinly sliced pickled radish like this. So pickled radish, also known as tammuji in Korean. And of course we have the vegan chickpea tuna, which <laughs> it is so good, okay? I make this probably like at least twice a month, okay? I love chickpea tuna. Anyway, let me just put this knife there for a minute. And I have a sushi mat. No, you don't need a sushi mat, my friends. Okay, it will help you, especially if you're new to making kimbap or making sushi. It will help you, but I've made kimbap or sushi many times without a sushi mat, so it's not necessary. But again, if you're new, you might want a sushi mat. And then of course I have a piece of nori or roasted seaweed. Okay, you can find these in the Asian section, Korean or Japanese supermarket. Big piece here. I usually use the rough side, put it in the inside. I hope I don't mess this up because I only have one, two pieces of nori left. Next, I've got, this is crucial, when you're making sushi or kimbap, a bowl of water. Okay, because the rice is sticky. Did I mention you have to use short grain rice, sushi rice, Korean Japanese rice? That's what you need to use because Korean or Japanese rice, it will stick to everything, okay, including your hands. So in order to prevent or at least minimize the stickage, you want clean hands, you're gonna dip your hands in the water so that they are nice and damp. And then we're just gonna, we're just gonna go in, we're gonna go in with the, with the rice, okay? You don't want the rice to be like super hot, but don't let it cool down too much. I feel like it's harder to work with when it's like cooled down, okay? So let it be warm, let it be warm, okay? Ah, my friend, you're gonna have to calm down. So we are just, what is this table? So we're just gonna make a very thin layer of the rice leaving a little bit of space on top because we have to seal it, okay? This is something that took me a while to make nicely, like kimbap or sushi. <laughs> In the beginning, guys, don't don't be discouraged if your kimbap or sushi doesn't look pretty because trust me, it took me years to like make it look somewhat decent. The first few I've made, oh, oh Lord Jesus. But you know what? Practice makes better. And now I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident with my keep up making skills. It's not perfect. It's definitely not as good as like my mom's, okay? But she's had like, you know, 30, 40 years of experience, my friends, whereas I have not. So I feel like can't expect perfection immediately. There we go. I think that's pretty good. Again, I left a space here at the top. You can see the black space because we're gonna seal it with that space. So now we have a nice bed where we've stuck it together. You don't have to press too, too hard, but as you can see, it is sticking pretty well because it's short grain rice. Now we're gonna add, let's add the chickpea tuna. Mm, I'm so excited, <laughs> it's gonna be so good. I'm gonna add a pretty generous layer here. You don't have to think about it as vegan tuna. You can just think about it as a chickpea kimpa. Okay, I know people get triggered. <sighs> Anyways, so we've added a nice little little layer here, okay? If you're if it's your first time making kimpa or sushi, just try not to overfill too much. I feel like that's the mistake that I still make often. <laughs> Now I'm gonna add the carrots. Now I'm just using raw carrots, but you can also stir fry the carrots, cook them a little bit with some salt and sesame oil. Usually that's what we use for kimbap carrots, but I was too lazy. Okay, we're making this slightly fresher. Next I also have, oh, my mouth is watering already, some cucumber slices. And these are optional, you don't have to add these at all. You can add whatever you want. I was gonna add avocado, but the store did not have any ripe avocado. So, sad day for me. So now I added the pickled radish. I usually do like two, usually. And then we can just roll, I know. Oh, wait, I wanna add a little bit more vegan mayo. Now I put some vegan mayo in. In a sriracha bottle. Cause I'm, ah, that is broken. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> oh, is it gonna break? I'm gonna be sad, is it broken? Okay, anyway. 
Sometimes I just want to squirt out some vegan mayo, you know? So I'm gonna add some extra vegan mayo. It's gonna add extra delicious, savory goodness. And then, starting from the bottom, we're going to just, oh, see, I may have overfilled it, we'll see. We're just gonna just, just gently fold over like that and then squeeze. Now, what you want, see, I always overfill it. <laughs> what you want, though, is that you want to touch the rice at the top. You want it so that this, there's still a bit of rice just hanging on at the very bottom there. You can see a little bit of it. That way you know it's gonna stay together. I feel like that's the secret because I used to always just, you know, overfill it and then just, it wouldn't stick at the, at the top, if that makes sense. And then you wanna close it up. And then what I like to do is this part, I just very gently dab it with a tiny bit of water and then just, there you go. And as you can see, it's a pretty fat roll. <gasps> there you go, that's how you make kimpa. And obviously you can add whatever you want, my friends. You can just cut it up and eat it like this, or you can do a little bit something extra. I like to add a little extra sesame oil and some sesame seeds at the very top. Just, just sprinkle that on there. You have no idea how excited I am. Woo! And then if you want, you can just kind of roll on the sesame seeds. It, they will get everywhere and that's okay. And there you go, there's that. Now let's cut it up. Can't decide if I wanna make another one, I probably do. <laughs> but then if I make another one, I know I'm just gonna eat another one. Now with the knife, you wanna make sure you're using a very sharp knife and if it helps, you can dampen it again so that it's easier to cut. Dampen it with some water. So, ooh, that's the end there. And there you go, there is the vegan tuna. Kimbap. Not the prettiest one I've made, but I think it'll be delicious. There we go. And then if you're making this for other people, so in Korea we often take this for um, like a picnic or something. And so we like make it for other people. And if you're making it for other people, guess what you can do? You can have the ends to yourself. I guess I'm gonna try it. Mm. 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 Mm -hmm. I'm gonna eat a piece of kimchi. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Okay, I'm gonna have to make another one because I think one is not gonna be exactly enough. Two might be too much. But we'll find out. Okay, so I'm gonna make another one and then and then we'll chat. I'm not gonna bore you through this one too. But you know how to make it now? Okay. Yay! Look at that kimbap! All right guys, so we are now ready to eat. As you can see, the vegan kimbap is looking fabulous. I need to take a picture of this. Where am I gonna, how am I gonna take a picture? How am I gonna take a picture? Whew. All right guys, so here's the kimbap. <gasps> Doesn't that look so good? Guys, let's be honest. Let's be honest. This looks delicious, okay? Um, even if you're not vegan, it looks delicious, okay? <laughs> so to go with the kimbap, as I mentioned, I will be having instant noodles or cup noodles. I am gonna have this Soon Veggie Ramen. This is vegan, it's a Korean brand. It's delicious and it's like a smaller portion than like the ones that you get in like the bag where you have to boil it in the pot. Obviously it's like slightly different. I actually prefer the pot versions, but we're gonna make cup noodles. So I'm gonna open her up and add that seasoning packet. So exciting. I love eating this combination uh, at a picnic or Let's face it, I haven't gone on a picnic for years. Not a picnic, why did I say picnic? A hike, okay? I bring hot water in like a thermos on a hike along with some kimbap and it is so good on top of a mountain after you have just hiked up, worked really hard, you know? This one is like a mild flavor and I wanna make it spicy because I'm Korean, we like our spice. So I'm gonna add some kuchukaru, which is red pepper uh, flakes, Korean red pepper flakes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be pretty generous, my friends, okay? I want it to be. Oh. This might be too much. I don't think I was thinking. I don't think I was thinking. Oof. 
Girl, what, what am I doing? <laughs> well, let's see. Shall we? Let's add some hot water. Ooh. And then I just let it sit like this. And where's my chopsticks? My chopsticks? Where are my chopsticks? Oh, here's my chopsticks. And you just lay your chopsticks like this and let it sit there for like three-ish minutes to drink. I've got bubbly, yay. This one is the blackberry flavor. Got some ice, some bubbly. This is the life. The way I was visualizing all of this, the way I was envisioning this moment, I'm just visualizing this current moment, you know? Anyways. All right. Oh, I also have some vegan kimchi. This is my mom's vegan kimchi. I do have the recipe for this on my channel. That video is now, oh my gosh, probably like eight years old at this point. How does the time just fly by, okay? I'm gonna eat vegan kimchi with everything, so that's why it's here. Let's make a little room for her. <sighs> okay. <laughs> are we ready to eat? I think we are. Okay. Let's eat the uh, ends. So the ends, sometimes I would argue the ends are the best part. Okay. Now for the small ones, I actually didn't add any extra vegan mayo, so I might just do a little dollop. There is already vegan mayo in the vegan tuna, so you really don't need to add extra, but you know, sometimes a little extra is good. So cheers. First bite. Kimbap. Technically, it's my second bite. But first bite of the mukbang part, yes. Cheers. Mm. 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 When I tell you, every Korean craves this meal, guaranteed. Okay. If you don't crave this meal, are you even Korean? Let's eat this big end. Rot hair. Mm -hmm. So, big end. I'm actually gonna put a little piece of kimchi on top. Cheers! Oh, it's gonna be a big bite. Mm. Mm. Guys, I know it hasn't been three minutes yet, but I gotta have a little bit of this broth. Mm hmm God, I added way too much of the red pepper <laughs> flakes. Hopefully it doesn't taste weird. Hold on. Oh, okay, it's not so bad and it's not that spicy. Oh, this is one of the best parts, is drinking the broth. Ooh. Anyway, my friends, we're back. <laughs> Let me know if you like these cooking mukbangs because I know a lot of you guys miss these. It's been like years, I think, since I've done a cooking mukbang. Mm, it's obviously a little bit extra work, so sometimes I just go straight into eating, but I think it is a little bit more special when we cook the food together and then we eat it together. You know, it's a whole experience, you know? So yeah, let me know in the comments if you like this style. Anyway, guys, I wanted to talk about a topic. Once again, I want to rant. You guys know, I like to rant. Mm -hmm. If you don't know this, now you know. So I wanted to talk about something because somewhat recently, there was like an article or some kind of, I don't know if it was like a study or something that was uh, published, okay? And I, it just pisses me off. <laughs> but let's talk about it. So it's basically the fact that people don't like the word vegan. Shocker to nobody that's been vegan for a while. Everybody knows this fact. This is not surprising, okay? People do not like the word vegan. And now I guess there's some kind of study, okay? So this article says, this article by the Washington Post says, what's one way to get Americans to eat more fruit and vegetables instead of meat? First of all, I, guys, I'm already ranting, okay? First of all, this is all vegan. This is all plant-based. I'm sorry, is it fruit? Is there fruit? I don't, I don't see fruit. I see deliciousness. I see lots of variety, okay? I see vegetables, yes, but I also see rice, I see seaweed, I see noodles. I don't see fruit, my friends, I don't. 
I think the noodles are ready. So that already like annoys me. <laughs> this implication that vegan food is just fruit and vegetables. <sighs> anyway. So, national experiment comparing food labels found people were less likely to select products described as vegan and plant-based than those touting health and sustainability benefits, according to a study in a peer-reviewed journal of environmental psychology. So apparently the results were very strong. People do not like the term vegan or even plant-based, I guess. Anyway, let's eat some noodles. So the noodles are gonna get soggy, so we're gonna have to eat. <laughs> Pisses me off. <laughs> Dip. Mm. Mm hmm. What did I tell you? This combination. As a match made in heaven. <laughs> mm. If you've been vegan for a while, you know that that's not a surprising study, but I guess we didn't expect it to be so drastic. Oh my god, I love dipping this. <laughs> it's so good. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. I just don't get, for the life of me, this vegan hate. Okay, I will never understand this. Hmm. So there's this like negative connotation with the word vegan, first of all. And then people think vegan food is like fruits and vegetables. Boring. When there's so much delicious vegan food, it's not my fault you don't know how to make vegan food, okay? Follow a tutorial, you know? Follow a YouTube channel, perhaps. Ooh! Mm. Mm. And it's funny to me that people prefer the words like sustainability. Cause like, I guess people care about sustainability, but as soon as you care about animal rights, oh my God, vegans, aren't you awful? <laughs> I just find it so funny. It's like, so you're allowed to be an environmentalist, right? You're allowed to care about the environment, but how dare we care about the animals? How dare we try to be as least hypocritical as possible? Because the thing is, I mean, we're all hypocrites to some degree, right? It's very difficult, especially in this day and age to live a completely ethical, moral life. And some people would say it's impossible because under the capitalist system, it's impossible. There's no such thing as like ethical consumption or something like this, which I kind of agree with to some degree, but as vegans, okay? And you guys know, if you're vegan, you know, you understand. If you're a vegan, you've tried, like most of the time, most vegans weren't born vegan. They actually decided to go vegan. And a lot of people's vegan stories like really inspire me and they really make me realize, you know, there's some hope out there for humanity. <laughs> and a lot of people went vegan because they care about animals and they don't want to make animals suffer and they are trying to do their best to do their part in not allowing animals to suffer and that's making a sacrifice to some degree right like let's face it we are making a sacrifice to some degree because obviously most of us grew up eating meat and other animal products most of us enjoyed meat and other animal products most of us don't want to be an outlier outlier and outsider 
to society. So a lot of us, you know, we didn't necessarily want to go vegan for shits and giggles. You know what I'm saying? Like we went vegan because we felt like this was the right thing to do. Now you may disagree. Okay, you may disagree that this is the right thing to do. You may disagree that this is the best way forward or that this is the only way to live ethically. Like, obviously, we can have these discussions. But ultimately, the intention is that we're trying to, you know, not cause suffering and harm to other animals. And the negativity surrounding vegans is so interesting to me. Okay, interesting being a very generous and kind word that I will use. The negativity surrounding vegans just for us being vegan. Not even animal rights activists. I know a lot of people just assume all vegans are activists. Most vegans I know are not activists, okay? I mean, you could argue that simply by being vegan, there's this level of activism, but when we talk about activism, we're talking about obviously, you know, people that are out there and putting themselves out there, all that stuff. I just think it's so interesting in a society that claims to love animals, that vegans are some of the most demonized people. It's like, I'm sorry, do, do you like animals or do you not? Okay, cheers. <laughs> mm. Oh. If you rescue puppies or kittens, you're deemed as a hero, right? But if you don't eat animals <laughs> every single day, 365 days a year, because you want to decrease the suffering of animals, you're deemed weird, you're deemed preachy, you're deemed a bad person, nobody wants to associate themselves with you. Ah, this one broke. Uh. And I know what people are gonna say. They're gonna say, it's cause some vegans are so loud and they're preachy and they wanna push their lifestyle onto others. Um, hello. Same with environmentalists, same with every other activist group, okay? We all want to be activists. And the reason why, again, guys, get it? What? Why do people not understand this? Why do people not get this? The reason why we want to spread this message is because, can you get there? Can you get there? It's because animals are being tortured, abused, killed in the process, in these industries. So just because we stop eating meat, just because I stopped eating meat, that's not gonna make a difference. We need more people. <laughs> it's called activism, okay? So obviously, guys, I'm preaching to the choir. I am preaching to the congregation. You guys are converted, but it's frustrating. Okay, it is frustrating that we have to apologize for the word vegan. Okay, and I strongly believe, and I've always said this, that there needs to be, um, some people think, oh, vegan, plant-based, you can use it interchangeably. I do not agree with this. I really don't. Okay, these are different meanings. You can't use plant-based and vegan interchangeably. Yes, sometimes you can, obviously, when it comes to food, you can call this plant-based kimbap or vegan kimbap. It would mean the same thing. But when it comes to actually like the way you identify or the way you discuss these topics, I truly believe it's very important to distinguish between plant-based, vegan, because they mean different things, okay? And it's not to be a vegan police and I'm never gonna be like, oh my God, you're just plant-based. I'm not gonna like call anybody out, but there is a difference between following a plant-based diet and being a vegan, okay? Very different. If you're vegan, you will be following a plant-based diet but you can't necessarily be vegan just because you're plant-based. So, um, and I think the reason why it's important to distinguish is because they, they just mean different things. And yes, I, I know people don't like the word vegan, but I think we just, we really do need to embrace it. Like I get it, okay? People don't like the word vegan, but there is no reasoning. It's because people just hate on vegans because what, we're, we're trying not to harm animals. I just, like I don't understand. What do you hate about vegans? Oh my God, they're loud and preachy. Not most of the vegans I've met. I've met tons of vegans. Some of the nicest, 
people, okay? Some of the people that think the most about their impact in the world are vegans. There's so many people out there that are vegans that are super inspiring, that are like out there, you know, despite all of the hate that they get, they're out there fighting for the animals. And whether or not you agree with their method, you have to agree that it's a noble cause. It's a noble cause. If you'd switch the animal to cats, you'd be like, they would be heroes. Oh, anyway. I definitely added too much um, uchugaru. It's actually not that spicy, but it made the soup a little bit like thick. <laughs> Anyways, deep. Mm. Oh my god. The only issue with cup noodles is that they get soggy really fast. Mm. <sighs> Alright, what else does this article say? <laughs> I love how I like barely read it and I'm already like so triggered. The study adds to a growing body of evidence that terms such as vegan or plant-based are typically not effective at persuading meat eaters to consume more food that doesn't come from animals. Aside from having health benefits, reducing how animal products that you eat can lessen the environmental and climate impacts of your diet. Again. Let's just not even worry about the animals, right? Let's worry only about health benefits, environmental benefits. Let's not even talk about the animals. This pisses me off, okay? Yeah, people just don't like the word vegan. <laughs> and that is the situation. So some people might be like, well, maybe I should, like, we should just stop using the word vegan. And I kind of understand that aspect. Like, you know, maybe for like a recipe, like I don't necessarily need to use the word vegan, I guess. But I also don't want to be afraid of using the word vegan. I don't want to bow down to this sort of negative connotation of vegans. Ooh, I'm gonna eat this with some remaining noodle. Mm. So much flavor. Anyway, people think vegans are judgmental, preachy, but switch the animal for a minute, okay? Switch the animal and see how people react to animal abuse in different situations. Obviously, the animal product industry is a bit different. It's an industry. It's like a full-on industry that exploits and abuses animals. So it is different, I acknowledge that, than, for example, an individual just harming an animal for whatever reason. But when you flip the animal, people's reactions, for example, like Cecil the lion, you guys remember, there was like many years ago, there was this like dentist that flew to some safari in Africa and like illegally killed a lion. Like he hunted a lion and the lion's name was Cecil and it was like a big deal, okay? Even though people hunt lions all the time, people hunt animals all the time, but because he did it, like I think, outside the legal limit or something along those lines, it became big news and he became like super shunned and canceled or whatever. The comments that you see people saying about this dentist, if we said any of these things, if vegan said any of these things about anyone else, it's like we would be fully, you know, deemed as inappropriate or, oh my God, how dare you spread this message this way? You know, people are calling him a murderer. Oh, I hope you get fed to the lions. Like, just awful stuff. I mean, obviously, again, I don't agree with what this guy did. And I'm very against hunting, especially trophy hunting. I'm not against hunting if you need to hunt to, like, eat meat and stuff, obviously, okay. But a lot of hunting that goes on nowadays, especially from, like, North Americans, for example, 
It's not really for food. It's kind of for like a hobby. It's like a sport, which is disgusting. Anyway. So yeah, when you call vegans judgmental, just remember what you would react to if you found out there's an industry that was like, I don't know, killing cats by like the millions, the billions, you know? How would you react? Would you be happy with it? It's just because something is normalized in your society doesn't mean that it's ethical, okay? You've just been desensitized to it. You haven't thought this through. So anyways, don't stop using the word vegan. I will not be shamed <laughs> to use a different word. I'm not gonna describe myself differently. Why is it so loud? Anyway, it just really irks me when people hate on vegans or hate on vegan food for whatever reason, because like, what? <laughs> Seriously, what is it? Think about this for a second. What is it? Mm-hmm. And before you say, oh, it's because they can't just mind their own business. Well, neither can you. Just in different contexts. Mm hmm Again, dog abuse, cat abuse, you wouldn't mind your own business either. Mm hmm Just saying. Anyways. Last bite. I'm very full. Cheers. No, my only issue with kimbap, literally my only issue, it's so hard to have leftovers because, especially the one that I made, I think other kinds would be okay, but because I added fresh cucumber and stuff, I have to put this in the fridge because you don't want to leave rice out. You don't, you don't want to leave food out in general, but rice poisoning is a real thing, guys. Don't leave rice out. By out, I mean like don't leave it out in the, um, in room temperature, okay? Don't leave it out. So you need to put it in the fridge, but when you put rice in the fridge, and when it cools down, it'll like get slightly hotter and it's like not as pleasant to eat. So I do need to like heat this up, but how am I gonna heat this up when there's cucumber in here? Do I want warm cucumber? Maybe. Anyway. <laughs> ah. Anyway, my friends, that is it for this mukbang. Let me know what your thoughts are on everything we discussed. Do you like the word vegan? <laughs> do you hate it? Let me know. If you're here, you probably don't mind it. Yeah, the recipes will be linked below, all of the relevant recipes that I discussed. I'll also link my mukbang playlist below as well, so if you guys wanna watch my previous mukbang videos, you can do that. And uh, and we're back, baby. We're back, hopefully I don't lose track again. <laughs> and yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, don't forget to check out my trip to Bali, which is linked below as well. Again, you can sign up to come to Bali with me. We can have these discussions in person, my friends, okay? I love having these discussions, especially in person with you guys. Always so fun to travel with vegans because we have such good insights and we have so much nuance and we have so much to talk about. So yeah, if you guys wanna come along to Bali on a vegan food tour, it's gonna be so fun. That's happening in October and that's gonna be linked below. If you guys wanna check out the trip, book now. Link is below. And yeah, thank you so much for watching, you guys. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!